what's going on guys so today we're going to go ahead and do a whiteboard video because i want to give you guys some examples and some exercises that you could utilize to help you increase your balance while you're throwing your kicks the reason why i'm doing this i'm getting a lot of questions lately on how i can improve my balance when i go to throw my kicks or when i go to throw my strikes so that i have better force production so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over the objective the focus points and i'm going to go over four key exercises that i like to utilize to help increase my balance whether that be from throwing kicks, throwing punches, and just overall movement capabilities. So first and foremost, the objective is to gain the optimal structural integrity and joint stabilization needed to provide force to your kicks. Okay, so our focus points are gonna be develop the joint prerequisites. So we wanna develop stability, mobility, and, and overall strength in the particular joints and in the muscles needed to produce power and also maintain a stabilized position while you throw your kicks. The second thing is gonna be strengthen up the muscles that cross that joint. Again, we wanna make sure that the muscles like the calves, like the glutes, like the hamstrings, and even into your trunk, where you're talking about your transverse abdominals, obliques, uh, erector spinae muscles, things like that. We wanna make sure those are nice and strong too. All right, again, number three is we wanna make sure the feet, the ankles, the knees, hips, and trunk, utilizing special exercises to increase that joint stability that, that overall stability in those joints that you can use and also the strengthen of the muscles there so that you can produce that force and so you're not losing balance as you go to throw your kicks. All right, let me go over the four key exercises so that you can increase your balance while you throw your kicks. Let's do it. All right guys, so the first one we're gonna do is very simple. We're gonna go ahead and grab a hip circle from slingshot and we're gonna do what's called monster walks. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna step to my side doing laterally, then we're also gonna be moving linearly. All right, so the main thing is also we wanna make sure is that we're creating torque with our hips and I'm also grabbing the ground with my toes. So I'm creating that, that uh, overall rooting into the ground, creating that tension there, grabbing the ground with my toes and creating that arch here as I go to step out. I don't want my foot to collapse and I don't want my knee to valve this in. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that torque and create that false arch there by pressing my big toe into the ground and keeping three points of contact from my little toe, my big toe, and my heel into the ground as I go to step. Now, as I go to step, I'm gonna make sure that my core is braced, right? My laps are down. That's gonna help me maintain a neutral spine. So as I go to step, I'm gonna step back into a neutral position all the way through, keeping the uh, ground contact there, make sure my toes don't come up like this. I'm not walking only on my heels, I, like again, I am walking three points of contact all the way through, maintaining a good position with my, uh, with my feet all the way up into my hips, going all the way up through my knees into my hips just like that. As I step, my knee doesn't valgus. I'm making sure that I'm leading with my knee, not my foot, so my knee doesn't cave in as I go to step. I'm always creating that torque there all the way through. All right, so you go sideways. You can do about 10 to 15 yards down and back, and then we're gonna go front ways with the front one. You're just gonna step, small step, keeping that knee out, making sure that the knee doesn't go inside the big toe. So I'm keeping that torque there, and as I go to step, I'm maintaining a good hip position. My hips are squared up, and I'm here as I walk through, still keeping tension on the band, and again, crushing my big toe into the ground. And then you go backwards, same thing almost walking super robotic, but making sure you still stay with that structural integrity. Nothing else is moving. There's no compensation. Knees are still in line. The band is getting tightly pulled apart as you go to step. So you keep an isometric tension in the hips. You're creating torque in the ground and your feet are getting worked to as well because you're grabbing the ground every time you step. All right, on to the next one. All right, so now we're gonna be moving on to the five cone toe tap. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up five cones around us. Whether you're using the left side or the right side, if you're gonna use the left side to balance yourself out, the, right, the cones are gonna be set up on the right side so you can use your right leg to touch the cones, okay? Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get, in, get into just a single leg stance here, making sure I'm balancing out with my entire kinetic chain right from the feet going all the way up into my ankle, knee, and into my hip, right? Making sure that I'm, my core is nice and engaged. I'm not leaning too far on this side. I'm still staying as neutral as possible, so there's no compensation going on there. And I'm creating that torque, so I'm gonna go ahead and create 
that false arch there, still putting that three, uh, that three points of contact into the ground, that tripod contact, so big toe, little toe, and heel. And then from there, I'm just gonna go ahead, touch, and come back. Touch, and come back. Touch, come back. Touch, come back, and touch, come back. All right? You can do this three to four times through, and you can do two to three sets all the way through. Okay, so again, we're here, touch, back touch back you can make it harder by spreading it out a little bit more obviously right going a little bit further making sure again that your knee doesn't collapse in we're creating that stability there and as I go to touch right I'm having to balance into my hip making sure that I'm still keeping tight pressure into the floor all right again like I said you can do those sets and reps accordingly and then obviously do the other side okay on to the next exercise Okay, so now to the next exercise, we're gonna use an Eric's pad here, and we're gonna go ahead and do a single leg reach out to a knee drive. So this is similar to what you would do, let's say for instance, if you're throwing a teeth kick, if you're throwing a, a, a knee or something like that, a tie knee, um, we're gonna make sure that we're getting that extension of the hip and then driving to into flexion, and we're doing that in a single leg fashion. But again, that Eric's pad is gonna give you some instability there, so you have to grab that pad as, as tough as you can with your toes and make sure you have, that you're creating that torque again like I talked about, all right? And as you do that, you're gonna brace your core. So this is more of an advanced version. If you wanna go ahead and regress this, you would just do this from the floor, all right? So here's your advanced version. We're gonna come out, you're gonna brace your core, brace, and then as from there, we're gonna come out and then drive, boom. And make sure that drive is explosive. We're gonna do it again. Come out to the side, and back, and then drive. Again, full position. cramping in your bottom of your foot. Also, you're gonna feel your hip and your hamstrings light up because you are giving yourself an RDL there too as well. I would say do around five to eight to even 10 repetitions with this. You can do two to three sets through. Make sure you do both legs. All right, on to the next exercise. Okay, so now that you've developed the stability and overall mobility in the foot, the ankle, the knee, and the hip, now we're gonna move on to more of that dynamic movement and increasing that explosive power and overall power production and eccentric loading. So we're gonna do a form of plyometrics, a low level plyometric, so that it can enhance your ability to absorb force and then redirect it, which is gonna give you optimal balance and stability and strength in those uh, muscles needed um, to keep yourself balanced while you throw your kicks. So what we're gonna do is a single leg bound going a 45 degree angle. So here it looks like this. We're gonna sit our hip back just like we did on the Eric's pad. Leg comes up and as I go to push off, I'm pushing off at a 45. From here, boom, and then I stick the leg. Push, stick, push, stick, push, stick, push, stick. All the way through, all right? Again, you can do these for about 10 to 15 yards, two sets through. All right, so those are my four exercises to increase your balance for your kicks. Let me know if you like it. Hit the like button if you do. Make sure you subscribe, make sure the notification so you know when my videos come out. Let me know if you like this video, and I'll see you again next time, peace.